Roshan Chopra from CPS. Hi. And Sanskar from CPS. Hello. Aditi Aya from DPS Bhopal. Good morning. Revat from DPS Bhopal. Good morning. Vibra from DPS East. Good morning. Agamya from DPS East. Hello. Okay, so let's get started. Hello. Hello. Now, does Hello. our language have an impact on our identity? Does the way we speak, the way we interact, our accent, our choice of words have an impact on how others perceive us, on how they see us as a person? Does it help them assume our identities? Yes, Ananya, you may start us off. Yes, I do think that uh, language does affect us in our identity because if I live here in India and if I'm speaking Hindi and if I go abroad somewhere and then I start speaking English, then somehow it will affect our my identity. Yes, Aditi. In my personal opinion, I believe language, the mere language can't define your identity. Your identity is so much more than just your language. It's how you behave, it's how you interact in all other non-verbal reactions. Yes, we'll have Vibra and then Mos. Well, I believe that first impression is always the last impression. When we meet a person, we talk, we interact. Language, the first impression, the person sets for us. Yes, Mos. I believe that the language we speak has a lot of has a great impact on our identity because how we speak with other people, our accent and our language, that according to that, people form a mental image of us and how we are and what are our interests and... Yeah. Agamiya, take on this and then Atma. Uh, language is one of the major part of your identity. Uh, language defines you. For example, you meet a person for the first time, it is language and accent through which you get to know who he is or where he comes from. I believe language is to the mind more than um, light is to the eye. So this influences our thinking and our thought reflects our identity. Yes, ma'am. The formation of identity is a lifelong process. So basically, the formation of identity includes exchange of thoughts and expression. So, when you're expressing and when you're there, when there is exchange of language, uh, language is the biggest lubricant in society which facilitates the ex exchange of thoughts and expression and I think that it is a lubricant which facilitates and facilitates the development of your identity. Okay, there are many languages which have similar accents, which use similar words with similar meanings. So, coming back to the topic, can we mistake a person's identity just because of the choice of words? Yes, Aditi, and then we have Neem. In my opinion, yes, we can mistake one because of his language. Because um, I once met a person who was, who had an American accent, but later on, I realized she was not an American, but actually a Canadian. So, we don't know, and we shouldn't be judging on the basis of language. Yes, he. Yeah, in my belief, I think language can be misguiding. So, language is just one part of your identity. We shouldn't judge or classify people using their uh, language just their language. Prashanti and then Moss. Okay, okay. Like my, like my fellow panelists said, language can be misguiding. For example, in our own country, there are many languages. A person can speak Tamil, but they will also know in my opinion, uh, we, may, uh, we may be knowing about many languages, we may be multilingual, but I believe that the core language, the mother tongue, that is what defines the identity. Well, see, I think that even if you learn many different languages, you try to pick up different accents. But will your core language still define your identity or will your identity be a mixture of the different cultures which you have seen? Yes, Asuka. I would like to say that whatever languages we learn, no matter how, lang how many languages we have learned, but at least a, some part of a basic language, our core language will be remaining in whatever accent we use. Arman and then we'll wrap up. I would like to add on that our core, our core language um, reflects our culture, from which culture we are, from which religion we are. And each and every religion has different practice and different rules and regulations of life. So that rules and regulations of our life will 
reflect our identity. All right. So language, it does play an important part in our identity. It does have to some extent define what we are and who we are. But our identity does also consist of many different things. All right. Moving on. Does literature need freedom? And does freedom need literature? Are these two topics inter interrelated or are they independent of each other? Can an impact on one also have an impact on another? Yes, Ananya. It is said that literature is the mirror of our, of our society. And if we restrict a writer or a, po a poet to write something, then whatever the literature that is written by him will be artificial. So it will not hold the truth of reality. So I think, yes, literature does need freedom. Vibra and then Reva. Well, I believe literature and freedom are interrelated. A person needs freedom to express through literature. Without freedom, they can't express. Reva. Uh, so let's take a realistic example. Uh, when a person is writing a book, um, basically the reader has the liberty or the freedom to visualize the character as he wants. So, when you watch a movie, for example, on the contrary, though you're looking through the lens of the director, you're perceiving the characters as he wants you to. But when you read a book, there's a difference. You, are, you have the liberty and the freedom to perceive the characters in your own way. So, I think freedom is a very big part of what literature means to us. Yeah. Awesome. And then I, have I believe that the literature is the best medium to express one's thoughts and his beliefs. So I think that to express one's thoughts and beliefs freely um, and more clearly, freedom is required for li literature so that the views of the writer is expressed clearly and clear and efficiently. Ramya. Literature is something which cannot be stopped. It's writer's perspective through which he writes his book. So, a, a book, a, literature is a creativity and we can't stop creativity. Okay, we have seen many books that have come out in the worst of times but have brought out the best of writers. Take Anne Frank for example. She wrote her diary when she was under oppression. She was hiding in her house. Yet, that was maybe her best works of art. Had she sat down to write a book, Maybe she wouldn't have done so well. So can we still have good literature without freedom? Yes, Aditi? Yes, um, I agree with my chair because um, literature may flourish with freedom, but it does not mean that it cannot survive in the darkest of times. The dark age is very well known to literates. Before the, uh, before the uh, Italian Renaissance is an age where we don't know what literature was. We don't know the meaning of literature because we don't have materials. But that does not mean that today we don't speak. We don't have literature. Literature does survive without freedom. Shanti and then what your take? Literature does record the scenario of that time. People know what it was like and in the press times they can sympathize with the writer and his views. Yeah, I would like to add yeah, on that beginning at the time of struggle for independence, uh, Lok Manya Tirak wrote great articles, wrote great uh, books uh, which could inspire people towards independence. And yeah, th that's why uh, literature needs freedom. Okay, taking that point in another perspective, does freedom mean literature? Do we need to write books and spread our ideas to people when our country is under oppression? Will, then ha will that help us in our struggle for freedom? Yes, awesome. Uh, I think that, uh, like I said, literature is the best medium for us spreading our views. So, if we are, if we are striving for independence or freedom, I think that literature should, uh, is the best medium to express our views and to propagate our agenda, so that more and more people can uh, listen to us and we can mobilize mass support for our views. Agami, and then finally, yeah. Freedom definitely needs literature as it, at the time of struggle, the British rule, the writers wrote books to Mahatma Gandhi wrote books, Ravindranath Tagore wrote books, so it helped people to know, to know their, to spread awareness. Um, literature inspires people, literature entertains, brings knowledge to people, it gives people a new perspective to see. I believe that is the most important thing for one. And even during the Indian struggle, Gora written by Rabindranath Tagore had so much of inspiration in people's mind that people fought just by reading that book. Okay, so literally.
literature and freedom are in fact interrelated. If we suppress one, the other may also have an impact. And But they may also not have an impact on each other to some extent. Coming to the final point of our discussion. The challenges imposed by virtual communication on written expression of language. Does the boom in internet, the boom in texting, blogs have an impact on the essence of literature? Are the youngsters losing out on literature essentially used to be? Yes. Uh, we'll have Sanskar and then we'll have Vipra. The new form of communication, this virtual communication, has been imposing many challenges on our literature. First of all, it has destroyed all our literature and the vocabulary especially. People have started using short forms oh. even when well, they have destroyed the literature completely. Awesome. Oh, sorry. Vipra. Well, uh, virtual communication has both positive as well as negative effects. Um, well, if we talk that this is the 21st century where the virtual communication plays a major role in everything. Awesome. And then Prashanti. Uh, the essence or the beauty of a language lies in the words and how they are used and how they are formed into sentences. In nowadays uh, technology laden world, the virtual communication is posing a threat to this uh, language as nowadays people are using a lot of short forms and slang words which causes a lot of confusion and uh, misunderstanding between the people and also this is also ruining the natural flair and the essence of our literature and our language so I think that there is a literature and language are being destroyed. After all, English is a living language. So we are going from five lines, five poetic lines of Victorian English to one short form. Okay, we have seen an increase in the number of blogs that are being written. So what we see is that people are expressing more in less. Can that in fact be better for our literature that people can learn more in a world where they have less time? Aditi and then Revan. Yes, I believe people can learn more in less time. Let's take an example of a whirlwind that took place in Twitter. They are popularly known as Twitter ovals or 140 character stories. Here, as my fellow panelists said, five lines into one word. We find out the beauty of language of English in a new perspective. Five lines into one word. How tough is that? How beautiful is our vocabulary? And I don't think virtual communication has affected. Uh, I'll come back to you. Sorry, Palace, a shorter time. We finally, have Revan and then we'll have to wrap this up. So, I think virtual communication, uh, when we are communicating virtually, we're losing out on a lot of literature. Talking about blogs, uh, for example, a person likes a blog, the reader has the ability to immediately react and respond to the blog. So, in that case, multiple views on the blog are, are kind of obtained immediately. In that process, the uh, kind of the you go by the likes the person has. So when so the logic of the herd prevails. The logic of the herd prevails because you go by the likes the person has. You look at the likes. Uh, you look at how many people have read that blog, and you judge the blog by the popularity. By its popularity. Okay. So we have seen a shift from the Victorian style of speaking to the modern English. From Sanskrit to the Hindi we are speaking nowadays. So can it be so that this new type of English with shorter words, shorter sentences can be the new thing? We'll have to see with time whether it takes a turn for the better or the worse. Thank you to all the panelists for joining me here today. Thank you. I've got some uh, good number of questions which I'll be putting forward to you. And uh, yes, we do have a prize for every winner, whoever answers the questions. And Arjo, sir. Okay, hello, hello, sir. You seem to be all decked up for today's literary fest, Kutta, Pajama. Yes, this is literary you seem to be all prepared for today. Oh, so that means any questions put to you? you can answer it. Obviously. Yeah. Look, he is prepared. Let's hope you are all prepared as well. Well, I do have a very good question today. The first question 
Which I'm going to put forward, sir, it is to you. Now, English translation of Mahabharat. Yes, Mahabharat. It's the only complete one in the public domain. Yes. I'm looking for the name wireless, of the wireless, 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 sir, with Vyas. Wireless. With Vyas was the writer, original yeah, writer. Yes. Yes. Translation, translation, translation in English. Translation in English. It has been done just once. Mahabharat is old. Ah, English oh. is very old language. Ah, no idea. No, even though English is very old language, yes, but it was translated. Uh, can and somebody translated. give the answer, from the Sir, you can have some. Someone else from the audience? Shall I repeat my question then? I said Mahabharat has been translated in, by, in English by an Indian reporter. I can give you a hint. His surname resembles to one of the famous cricketers. He is again from Calcutta. Mr. Ganguly, I think Ganguly was but a cricketer. I need the complete name, sir. Oh, ah, this is not correct. Sorry, sir. Krishna Kumar Ganguly is very near to the right you answer, sir. Can you just... There is... Yeah, ma'am, you? Kisari Mohan Ganguly. Kisari Mohan Ganguly is yes. yes. So... Ma'am, please come and... Please. Do the... Ma'am, ma'am. Salima, ma'am. Sir, you have asked a lot about it. In Gujarat, in Ahmedabad, you have talked about it. 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 You have मारू सदभा के जैसे कि मारा घर नहीं बिल्कुल बाजू में रहता था मैं हमने नौता जो है जुदी बात चें 125 मु वर्ष हमने जन्म जयंती हुई जो है जैसे सर बोलिए वेल सर अच्छा आई हर वेल सर या देयर वी हैव आई थिंक ही हैज गोड ऑल द आंसर्स सर धूमकेतु धूमकेतु राइट � धूमकेतु नहीं 125 नहीं जन्मजयंती उजाई रही थे हम नो साचू नाउ गौरी शंकर जोशी सर एक ये सर बोलिए फोटोग्राफ फोटोग्राफ प्लीज प्लीज सर प्लीज सर कोडाक मोमेंट वी कैन से फोटोग्राफ यू आर गेटिंग कोडाक मोमेंट यू आर गेटिंग द स्क्रिप्ट फ्रॉम कैलरेक्स फाउंडेशन थैंक यू सर ओके सर यस सर माय केन इज रेडी आई एम रेडी विथ अनदर क्वेश्चन यस सर नाउ इट्स अ सिंपल क्वेश्चन इट गोस टू द मॉडर्न रीडर्स ओके आई जस्ट नीड द ऑथर यस ऑफ अ फेमस बुक दैट वाज नेम व्हाइट टाइगर व्हाइट टाइगर व्हाइट टाइगर अच्छा बिफोर आई सी माय टीम दे आर रेडी ओनली सर यस मैन फ्रॉम द ऑडियंस व्हाइट टाइगर यस सर मैम इज रेडी Ma'am is ready, okay? Sir, okay, sir, just a minute, someone is there. Achha, if, we, if you don't mind, we can give chance to them. Yes, yes, sir. Author of White Tiger, yeah. Arvind Dhaniga, yeah, he has got the right answer. sir, and you are again getting and a gift from Canada's Foundation. You are again getting? Yes, sir. Well, sir, it's... Uh, sir, we know Gujarati, sir. Gujarati, we know Gujarati. Gujarati, we know Gujarati. We know Gujarati. Ah, Gujarati. एक गीत बदहारे सांभरे हो शेख दाच मारो गीत कोई पूरु नहीं था वादे इलाके दो गाड़े हम किधर दो गाड़े हम तो वो खराब गाओ जो पर यू हैव टू बेर इट छोड़ दे सारी दुनिया किसी के लिए ये मुनासिफ नहीं आदमी के लिए यस द फिल्म है ना लेखक सरस्वती चंद यस सरस्वती चंद्र कौन है लेकिन तो कोई कहीं शेख Again, one of the comments. Uncle is again there. Yes, yes sir. Govardhan Tripadi. Yes. Govardhan Tripadi is the right Govardhan answer. Govardhan, give him a big round of applause. He has won the second right. Ma'am, please. Sir. And that so, is what Kellerx believe. And, okay, keep clapping now. Like, we have got one. Thank you, sir, very much. Well, one more question. Yes, one more. Yes. Now, it goes to... You talked about a movie. I'm going to talk about a movie as well. Yes, sir. Guide. Guide. Ah, Devana. Yes. I wanted to know who wrote that book or the story. Can anyone name the author of the story, sir? Okay. Oh. Sir. I think sir at the back, at the back, please. At the back, sir. Great, Arjun Narayan. Please he, give him a big round of applause. Very great. Famous. Very famous cartoonist, but he has written this. Sir Chillo Sawal, 
जवाब अपेक्षा राखु अंकल ने कोई बीजा जीते तो मजा आक्ट सर जय जय गरवी गुजरात Good morning one and all present here. My name is Prashanti from Calorix All of International School and today I will be your narrator for my fair lady. Many Indians have mastered the English language. However, many sections of English society remain unaware of its nuances. Literature is a reflection of society of the time and society nothing but an amalgam of ideas manifest in the language in use Bernard Shaw a critic of the late 19th and early 20th century has among his several plays Pygmalion which has been made famous by the musical adaptation My Fair Lady You may not be aware of version but certainly the hindi remake manpasand and the gollywood version sattu rangili which were both blockbusters in the 70s might ring a bell the story concerns eliza doolittle a cockney flower girl who takes speech lessons from professor higgins a professor of phonetics all so that she may pass as a lady literature is a manifest is manifestation of a person's status in society or so says professor higgins in the following version of the enactment of an excerpt of my fair lady okay okay tab bhi launch hai ke तो Love, my lady. Thank you, sir. My pleasure, lady. Eliza, 
क्या बच्चे रप्पा कापन की तो पांच लाख कपा कपा का जाओ ना जाओ The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plains. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plains. See rain, not rain. Oh God, I can't do this. Not anymore. Just think about what you're dealing with. The majesty and grandeur of the English language. It's the greatest possession we have. The noblest thoughts that ever flowed in the hearts of men are contained in its extraordinary, imaginative, and musical mixtures of sounds, and that is what you set yourself out to conquer, Eliza, and conquer it you will. Keep at it. Now dear, I have to go and see my father. I am going to go.
Eliza opens her flower shop and marries Freddie. Professor Higgins and Pickering come to buy flowers from her and Eliza greets them in perfect English. Flowers for you guys, sir. Roses, gladiolas, chrysanthemums. I'll take one. A flower for the lady. Thank you, sir. Higgins, I think we've done our job. Yes, we have. Ah, uh, the Pygmalion effect. So Eliza Doolittle does become a lady. And what changes her into one is the language she speaks, her etiquette, and her behavior. What truly distinguishes really? a cultured person from others ah, is definitely not the money possessed, but by the person's speech ah, and behavior, which are remembered long after everything but money that we have, that is forgotten. Words once spoken can never be brought back to the bow from which they were shot. But language spoken from the heart can calm a storm of agitated minds and warm a heart. From all of us in the Calorix family, thank you for being a wonderful audience and have a great day. Thank you.